ओके सो दिस चैप्टर इज एक्सटेंशन ऑफ ई एम आई चैप्टर सो वी हैव सीन दैट द इंड्यूस ई एम एफ कैन बी डेवलप इन मल्टीपल वेज सो वी हैव सीन दैट ओके हाउ द मैग्नेटिक फ्लक्स which we write as ba cos theta so we can change the flux by changing the b value we can change the flux by changing the area of the loop <clears throat> and now we'll try to change the flux using the change of orientation of the loop okay so theta basically represents the orientation of the loop and by designing <laughs> a uh, rotating loop we can also change the flux am i audible to you sir yes sir <coughs> so you can take north and south pole and between okay <laughs> and now we'll bring some the rotating loop so by some mechanism we set the loop into a uh, rotation with a constant angular frequency omega <laughs> so omega represents a constant <coughs> angular frequency of loop and we know that north and south pole of the bar magnet will create the uniform magnetic field of course it will be three dimensional but uh, what we are drawing here is two dimensional picture so in the very beginning let me assume that the area vector of the loop which is always perpendicular to the plane <coughs> and the direction of magnetic field let's say they are parallel to each other So if I draw the side view of this loop, so you can draw the side view just like a a small line, <coughs> and. Uh, And this is not the side. This is the top, by the way. This is the top view, actually. Oh. So, <clears throat> from the top view, this is the area vector. and uh, 
This is the B vector. And because it is rotating with omega, so after some time, B will remain same, but A vector will change, right? Yes. So after some time, the loop will be here. So now the area vector will be here. And if the loop will turn by <coughs> theta, which you can add as omega into t, so area vector will also turn by theta. So by definition of flux, you can add as number of turns into b into area of the loop into cos of omega t, right? Yes. Sir. And therefore, by definition of induced EMF, or you can say by using the rad as well, you can write E induced equals to minus d phi d by dt. And this will give you If I represent induced EMF as V and the coefficient of sine omega t as V naught. <coughs> so what you can understand from this expression that a uh, loop which rotates with constant angular velocity is the best way to produce the sinusoidal voltage source. And V naught is the maximum induce emf which is given by n b a omega so n b a omega is the value of uh, maximum potential difference <coughs> that can be developed due to the rotation of the loop okay yes so from here uh, we got the a voltage source which is a time dependent source and not only time dependent it is sinusoidal source so <clears throat> because sine function will change the polarity from plus to minus depending on the quadrant so the voltage will also keep on changing the polarity and because the polarity of the voltage source will change uh, periodically. So such source is called alternating source of voltage or simply alternating source. So sinusoidal source is easy to develop. Okay, that is the idea. So uh, AC doesn't mean sinusoidal, but of course sinusoidal is one of the form of AC. So AC can have any function and uh, for any source, voltage source uh, to be called sinusoidal, the only criteria is that it should be periodic and <clears throat> it must change the sign. So it should go plus and minus periodically. And if it is doing that periodically, we call a voltage source, else we call direct current source or DC source. So I think in current chapter, I have explained what is AC, what is DC, right? Yes. Just uh, once again, what is alternating source? <coughs> so 
so the word alternative means change of direction okay so in a wire or in a current carrying wire you can say if current will <coughs> switch the direction of flow periodically then it must be called alternating current and uh, only alternating source can create alternating current okay so direct source will create direct current and alternating source will create alternating current <coughs> now <coughs> A current a current in a circuit will So current in a circuit will change its direction of flow periodically. Now, among various AC source, sinusoidal is of great importance. And the reason is sine function follows the property of a vector. So every sine function, let's see if I write a simple y equals to a sine x. then every sine function can be represented in terms of phasor. So what is phasor? So phasor is called a rotating vector. What do you call? A rotating vector. Let's say if this is the sine function. then the height of this uh, graph we can express in terms of phasors let's say if i have if we're at x equals to omega t So every sinusoidal function can be expressed in terms of a rotating vector and this rotating vector is called phasor. Okay. Now, how to represent a phasor? So, let's say if you say this is why this is, and in the phasor representation, we choose something called a reference. And the radius of this circle represents the amplitude of oscillation. So if this is A, then you must take the radius equivalent of A. Okay. So if I say this is T equals to zero, <laughs> Then, uh, and if I assume this is rotating with a constant angular velocity omega, then <coughs> after some time t,
so at t equals to t this is omega t this is a in radius so if you take the projection onto the y axis then this is called instantaneous height y and you can clearly see that <coughs> y is nothing but a sine omega t isn't it yes so that is why the sine function will have a very nice uh, a representation in terms of a rotating uh, vector which we term as phasor and because of the phasor <coughs> If you have multiple phasor, then you can find the phase difference of the phasor as well. So <clears throat> every alternating source will have alternating voltage. Every alternating current will have alternating voltage first. <clears throat> so alternating voltage source we have derived already. So the sinusoidal. <coughs> voltage source we write a v equals to v naught sine omega t and now every function will have rms value <coughs> so what is rms value okay, i think we have discussed so rms is root mean square value Yes, sir. So it is like uh, first you square the function, find the average for the interval. So if we calculate the RMS for the uh, one complete interval, <laughs> or even if we calculate for the half interval, <laughs> it will be same. Because once you square the function, the graph will be only on one side of the x axis, right? So you won't get any negative, anything negative, isn't it? Yes. So if this is the graph of a sine graph, <coughs> the graph of sine square. This is a big <laughs> and because of the symmetricity, so this part will have similar value as this part. So whether you calculate up to this value or you calculate up to this value, so RMS of T by two will be same as RMS of T by two, and. Uh, you can calculate this value of RMS. So it turns out to be how much? Because the average of sine is square theta from 0 to 2 pi, or average of cos theta from 0 to 2 pi is always equal to half, and you can uh, remember this answer. It's so perfect. So the shortcut way of writing the RMS is square average root So is zero two pi. So instead of omega t, I'm writing theta, and we know this is one by. So the RMS value is one by root two times the maximum value. Only for sinusoidal, right? Yes. So <laughs> there may be many different forms of wave. 
triangular, rectangular, saw tooth. If I have taught you already, you can skip right now. Yes, I'll teach. Finding the RMS value for the graphs that you said. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Sir, so we've done. Yes, sir. Sir, as in like we find uh, the average of all these graphs and then yeah, just correct. apply the formula. Hmm. Okay, sir. Let's do one more question so that it will help you in uh, recalling what we learned earlier. Yes. <clears throat> Types of. If I ask you find the VRMS from zero to T, so it is same as finding the VRMS from zero to T by two, because once you square it, the below function will become similar to the numerator function. <coughs> so try this out. Okay.
answer in non binary Yeah, that's correct. <clears throat> Okay, so you, so you remember the everything, I think, so you don't need to worry. Now, the beauty of sine wave is that it can be expressed as a phasor. And uh, <clears throat> once you know how to add vectors, you can actually add any trigonometric function which follows sine and cosine law. So, for example, in mathematics, <clears throat> If I write the y equals to two sine theta plus three cos theta, how to add? <laughs> or uh, in fact, how to reduce it? But the moment you understand that this can be expressed as a phasor, <coughs> so if you choose sine graph as a reference graph, then <coughs> this we can add as two sine theta. But this you can add as 2, 3 sine <coughs> theta plus 90. Correct? Yes. So if I call this is 2 in length, then I have to add a value 3, which is 90 degree anti clockwise. If I turn 90 degree anti clockwise, which is <coughs> so basically this is your 3 cos theta. Or simply three left square three. And because these are acting <coughs> or behaving similar to vector, so what will be the resultant? So you can use the triangle law or <coughs> parallelogram law vector addition. Let's make it better. Uh, very famous. Huh? So the resultant will be how much? Five. Sir. And what will be this angle? We need to calculate. Yes, sir. But we know this is thirty-seven degree. Luckily, we know, right? Yes, sir. So it means the summation can be expressed as five sine theta plus thirty-seven. That is how we convert. A summation of trigonometric I mean, ratios if it only follows sine and cos. So if, if you are solving even the mathematics and if you are solving only sine and cos, think as a vector, add as a vector, express as a vector. So what I did was <clears throat> I took theta as the reference. So I will only show those angles which is beyond theta. Like theta plus 90. So I need to move 90. Uh, theta plus alpha. <laughs> so I need to move alpha. <coughs> theta plus uh, like uh, uh, theta minus uh, 45. So I have to go below this line. Theta minus below theta plus above. So <coughs> plus means uh, turn anti clockwise and minus means turn clockwise. So this is a way of handling the phasors. And that is why the way to add a sinusoidal function is pretty easy because we can do just like using the vectors. So I hope this will help you a lot in uh, solving various part of physics. <coughs> so for example, if I give you something like uh, add y plus two, uh, or sine omega t then y cos omega t then <coughs> three cos omega t plus thirty degree 
so if you expand every term <coughs> it will be a bit tedious task so the way of handling such thing is take a reference line and call it omega t <laughs> so first term is i mean uh, and, and we'll convert everything into sine so four sine omega t means a four unit in this direction itself but five cos omega t means i have to turn by 90 degree then only I will, it will become cos and three cos omega t plus 30 means first you turn by 90 and then turn by 30 extra Yes, sir. And because these are vectors with a <clears throat> well defined length, we can even use a, a component of vector to add the component x component together, y component together, and we can solve. So, definitely, yes, you get 4 minus 4, 3 sine 30. So x common will be 4 minus 3 sine 30, which is 2.5. Yes, sir. And then uh, 5 plus 3 cos 30. So y will be 5 plus 5. And therefore, <clears throat> the resultant will be under root of x square plus y square. Okay. Yes. Now this idea will help you in solving question of alternating current because in this chapter our syllabus is all about a sinusoidal source and therefore every function that we are going to add will be sinusoidal. Okay. Okay. And it's because every vector can also be expressed in terms of a complex number. Therefore, the AC can also be solved in terms of complex number. <laughs> yeah. So in the complex number notation, <coughs> Generally, we write this as A, which is the length of vector E power J omega. <coughs> and this is like a de Morvan's theorem, you know. So you will study in uh, complex number that's a de Morvan's theorem, de Morvan's. That E power iota theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. Oh. And uh, e power minus i theta is cos theta minus i sin theta. So e power i theta plus e power minus i theta by 2 will be how much? So basically, uh, every cosine function or sine function. You can write in terms of exponential. But I'll let me tell you what is the meaning of uh, this way of writing. <laughs> so, this way of writing means <clears throat> omega t is the reference. And if you want to turn by some value, And uh, if you want to turn by any value, just write plus. <laughs> uh, plus alpha, let's call alpha. So plus alpha means turn the vector by alpha degree. Yes. Or alpha radian or whatever. <clears throat> and minus means uh, clockwise. Plus means anti-clockwise. So <clears throat> there are three possible ways to solve question of uh, uh, AC because, because it is sinusoidal. 
So we can employ either phasor, we can employ either a complex number method. Because in complex number, <coughs> If you talk about the argon plane, and if it is real axis, and if this is the imaginary axis, <coughs> and uh, if we have a point called uh, a comma b, so the way in which we express this point in terms of position vector. So this is basically the mod of or simply R you can see. Okay. What we call is called Z. So we write Z equals to A plus iota B, right? So the length of the vector will be how to take the length of vector? So Z mod is in complex number, we don't square and add. What we do is we write, we take Z multiplied with Z conjugate. So <laughs> we talk about the conjugate and conjugate means if Z is this, the conjugate will be <laughs> the mirror image. This conjugate means the mirror image. So, uh, it will give you how much answer? And then a square minus b square. No, it will come plus. Oh, sorry, please. Yes. Because i square is? Minus so, square. mod, it will give you the real value, right? Yes, sir. And that is why if you think in terms of vector, if this is z, the Z concept will be the mirror image, the reflection actually. And uh, if you take the resultant, <laughs> so Z and Z conjugate are, and <clears throat> the multiplication of okay, we are just writing the modulus value here as a square plus b square so the resultant of these two it will be along the z axis uh, but that is like addition of the vector but what we are doing here is uh, multiplication which is like a dot product <clears throat> so what will the dot product of these two Uh, so, okay, leave this complex. This is complex number. So, in the complex world, uh, definition will alter a bit. But the exponential way of writing will be uh, easier in many situations. So, you can add <coughs> A into E power. Complex notation J. J. Okay, what is J here? Basically, yeah, J is playing the same role as the iota. <laughs> in physics, we call J operator. In maths, we call iota. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> J operator. The meaning of J operator is taken this way. <laughs> If you have any number a, and if you multiply this number with j, it will turn by 90. So if this is a, this is j a, and if you multiply j again, it will turn by 90, it will become j is for a. <coughs> Therefore, a and j is for a are equal and opposite, isn't it? Yes. So j is for is? So J means turning by 90 in anti clockwise sense. Um, yes. And okay, this is a very uh, famous proof that J is minus one. 
so how to physically represent j so j will be like a rotation okay something to do with rotation we'll see how to use all these ideas to solve question so ac chapter uh, is a different chapter but the sinusoidal source based chapter can be solved in much much easier way using idea of vector <clears throat> or you can say idea of phasor yes okay <clears throat> so when you express every function in terms of phasor so there is a chance that you may see some phase difference so in this particular chapter we apply the voltage source <coughs> and we check the current and we try to compare the phase of these two vectors uh, phases not vectors so if we choose v equals to v not sin omega t <coughs> as a by default voltage source for all our application <coughs> then we need to know certain facts actually so <coughs> fact to remember <coughs> so in india the frequency of a uh, rotation of the loop like i have shown you how to uh, obtain the sinusoidal voltage source so we saw that you need to rotate the loop so in india the frequency we take for production of the electricity is 50 hertz and <clears throat> the rms voltage in india for a household supply is 220 volt <coughs> so the rms value and we know that uh, v rms is defined as v not by root 2 for uh, <coughs> sinusoidal function right Yes. Therefore, <coughs> the maximum value we can add is root 2 VRMS and root 2 multiplied by 220 will give you roughly 311 volts. <laughs> so it is generally asked that uh, which one is more dangerous, uh, 220 volt uh, AC or 220 volt DC. So when I say 220 volt AC, it means I'm saying RMS value. So although RMS is 220, but the maximum is how much? 311? Yes, sir. So that is why the <coughs> AC of 220 volt is much more dangerous than AC of 220. Because when you say DC 220, it means it is only DC to 20, nothing else. Isn't it? Yeah, sir, there is no RMS value for that. Yeah, no, the RMS itself is 220. Yes, because sir. something is constant, then you whether you find average RMS, all will be same, no? Yes, sir. So V not equals to <coughs> this value. Okay. Okay. So <coughs> generally, when you solve question, they will add something like fifty hertz. 220 volt 
So instead of voltage, they will like this. They will do something like this and they will like something like this. <coughs> so how to convert this into formula? So it will come V naught, which is 220 root 2 sine omega is how much? So V equals to 220 root 2 sine 100 pi t. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so from here to here, you have to do on your own. So the moment they mention frequency and <laughs> voltage in AC, whatever you specify, the specification or any measurement always represents RMS value. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So it will always represent the RMS value. Yes. Next. <clears throat> What we are trying to learn here, if our source voltage source is sinusoidal, and if our voltage source is uh, <coughs> the reference from where we check the value of current, so we will try to apply that voltage source in various circuit element, and we'll see how current is produced in such circuit. <coughs> <clears throat> given that voltage source. So we will begin with R circuit. So what happens if we have a, a register connected across So let's say V equals to V naught sine omega two. When it is sinusoidal source, we don't have the the big line, small line. We just have the circle. So you can choose at any instant. Let's say this is plus, this is minus. Okay. Yes. And because electron is having very very small inertia, because we know electron is very small in mass. So changing the inertia of electron is not a big deal. So you can change the direction of uh, flow of electron as quick as possible. And electron will respond to it. Okay. Okay, the sir. reason is electron is having very less energy. Very less. Yes. So at this instant, uh, the current will flow like this. And you can think this as a value of voltage and you just add the pitch of flow. You can add uh, I equals to. V by R. <coughs> so that is V naught by R sine. So we can also rewrite as I naught sine omega T. What we can see that <coughs> the function governing both voltage as well as current in R circuit is sine omega T. Okay. It means <coughs> both will follow the same phasor. sine phasor with a different length, right? Because current will have different length than voltage, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, So if you represent uh, voltage by this big line, and if you call this as V naught, because we always take the radius equals to the amplitude.
then current will always align itself parallel to this line because both are following the sine function right yes the only difference will be the length, length of the amplitude <coughs> yes so after some time t the voltage and current will align always in the same direction but <coughs> so both will turn at us uh, at the same pace and therefore both will turn by the same value so they will always remain aligned and so we say that there is no phase difference so angle wise <coughs> we cannot see the two arrow at a different angle so the angle between the arrow is zero and therefore yes. what we said in our circuit <coughs> current <coughs> remains in phase with voltage. So <coughs> as voltage will grow, current will also grow and vice versa. It means <coughs> it is like a, a father and his very young son is doing exercise so when father will move the hand up the son will also move the hand up when father will bend left son will also bend left so you can see that both are copying each other <coughs> and therefore although they have different dimension but they turn by same value so there is no phase difference understood yes sir. so in a way you can say <coughs> current in our circuit will copy the Father, that is the voltage source. Okay. Yes. So you can think current as a son and a voltage as father, and both will do the exercise in the same fashion. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so then comes the <laughs> uh circuit again <clears throat> we are looking for the relationship between current and voltage source So at any instant, if you think this is plus, this is minus, then the plate will have the positive charge here and this will have a negative charge. <clears throat> so in C circuit, we cannot have the direct relation of current and voltage. We can have relation of charge and voltage, right? Yes. And we know from uh, circuit electric Q equals to CV, which means the charge on the plate of capacitor is CV naught <laughs> sin omega T, isn't it? Yes, but we are looking for the current relation. So to get current, we need to differentiate this function. <coughs> and the moment to differentiate, you get a C V not omega cos omega t, isn't it? <coughs> so yes. I turns out to be V not <coughs> omega C. We can write as one by omega C like this. For some purpose, and <coughs> cos omega t to compare with the voltage source, I must express in terms of sine. So <coughs> you try sine omega t plus something. Or minus something. So if you add 90, you will get the cos omega t, right? Yes. Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes. Sir. So you can see that uh, the current will be 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 the
सन इज रनिंग फास्टर देन हिज फादर दैट्स गुड थिंग और कैन से ही इज वन स्टेप अहेड so we say that in c circuit <coughs> or in capacitor current leads the <coughs> voltage by pi by t <coughs> or you can say voltage lag behind current <coughs> by pi wide so the phasor will be uh, really interesting here if we draw the phasor so <coughs> as i said we take horizontal as a reference and verticalize the variable so if voltage source is like this at t equals to 0 <coughs> at the same instant how the current source will be 90 degree clockwise yes anti clockwise right yes so this is i know this is v not so this is how we represent so even after some time <coughs> when voltage source is here the current will remain perpendicular like this yes so the <coughs> the phase of each vector or each phase there will change but the phase difference will not change phase difference remains constant so in c circuit it is the current which leads which means when voltage is minimum current is maximum <laughs> interesting yes and vice versa yes so in this case you can say the current try to be ahead of his father which is really good the son should always go son or daughter both should go ahead of their parents in terms of knowledge in terms of success and everything else okay so <clears throat> this is the property of c circuit where current leads the voltage and <clears throat> to draw the phasor is pretty easy is simply draw the voltage source and turn 90 degree okay <clears throat> now we need to talk about something called uh, 1 by omega c so dimensionally if you divide voltage <coughs> with something then something must be resistance because the dimensional voltage upon resistance is current right yes sir so <clears throat> by this simple comparison we can say that <coughs> xc must be written as 1 by omega c and xc is called not resistance because resistance means something which dissipates the energy <coughs> xt will oppose the flow of ac but will not dissipate any energy and therefore it is called capacitive reactance so <coughs> you can define this as the is the property by virtue of which <coughs> capacitor 
opposes the flow AC. So, <clears throat> why we call it reactance? Because a resistance will offer you opposition for the current, but it will also incur some heat dissipation or energy loss. Whereas reactance is opposition without any loss of energy. It is like a peaceful protest versus vandalism. Okay. Yes, sir. It is like a <clears throat> non violence versus violence. So you can say Capsicle is like a Mahatma Gandhi who believed in non violence. Okay. Okay. Sir. Anyway. Now, what is interesting to note the dependence of reactance with frequency. Because this you can rewrite as. So this dependence is interesting. You can see that as the frequency will grow in value, the opposition will be lesser and lesser, right? Yes. Which means. <coughs> If we have, if we plot a graph of uh, reactance versus frequency or angular frequency, the graph will go like this. So you can see that. <coughs> As omega will grow, the the offer, the opposition that the capacitor will offer to such high frequency <coughs> current will be negligible, isn't it? Yes. So, in fact, uh, capacitor do not offer any resistance to very high frequency, and that is kind of a, a big advantage in uh, designing something called modulator and demodulator called modem devices <coughs> because communication the world of communication uses superposition of two types of wave one is called the message signal or you can say the signal which we intend to transmit over distance and other is called the carrier signal, <coughs> which is particularly light ray, because we know that light moves really fast. So if you want to, let's say if I'm saying something and if you're listening in Oman, even if I take the speed of sound as 340 meter per second, to reach Oman, it will take a few minutes, right? Yes. <coughs> so we can say that, uh, the speed of sound is not good for communication. So if we are communicating almost instantly, which we feel it is possible due to the <coughs> something called carrier wave. So what I'm saying is being put over the carrier wave, you can think carrier wave as a fighter plane. And what I'm saying is the, the pilot, you go to that uh, carrier wave, which will take you there. And then you will be dropped to the destination. <laughs> so <clears throat> to filter message from the carrier, we employ a capacitor because capacitor will act as short circuit for high frequency, but it will offer a great resistance for the low frequency and human voice is low frequency and carrier wave is very, very high frequency. And by passing through capacitor, it will segregate from the message. <coughs> and that is how we rediscover the actual information which we transmitted. Such circuit is called filter circuit. I'll show you later on <coughs> how to design it. Yes. 
it's very simple. You can just do like this. Just. So in filter circuit, we have a capacitor. We have a register. So we give the input signal here. You can see high frequency inside and outside the envelope is low frequency. So this is your information and this is your carrier. <laughs> <clears throat> so when such signal will reach here, the high frequency wave will pass like this. Okay. And the low frequency signal will go through this. And here is the output. <clears throat> so the output will correspond to the voltage of low frequency. So this is input. <coughs> and uh, because this is the register and this is basically, I mean, this is a voltage source actually, a complex voltage source. <laughs> so this will actually filter the message from the transmitted yes. signal. Okay. Yes. And because for high frequency uh, capacitor do not offer any resistance or any I mean, opposition. <laughs> so a capacitor is called high pass filter. So high pass means high frequency can pass through it. Okay. Yes. And low frequency will be rejected. So we are, what we say that uh, for a very high frequency, So for very high frequency capacitor will act as short circuit. Understood? Yes. Sir. <clears throat> so in communication devices, we use capacitor a lot for the same purpose because communication is all about uh, superposition of high frequency with low frequency that is called modulation. So we modulate the carrier with the <laughs> help of massive signal and this modified signal called the modulated signal is actually transmitted over the channel <laughs> and it is again uh, received at the receiver end where we need to uh, re -separ I mean, again separate these two signals using the filter circuit. So we use filter circuit in this particular way. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So I hope this is clear. High yes. pass filter. Now, if you talk about the stereo system, the sound system. <coughs> so we have two things called treble and bass. Okay. So treble is basically a capacitive circuit and bass is basically inductive circuit. So in music, we have combination of high frequency and low frequency sound. So when you use the, the wired instruments like the guitar, sitar, veena, ektara, and so on, the wired instruments are always having high frequency of oscillation. And therefore, if you want to listen to more of the guitar sound, like Hotel California, then you need to increase the treble. Because treble will allow more of the high frequency to go through the speaker and will suppress the low frequency sound, if any. So let's say if we have bass, uh, if we have the dhol, nagare, tabla, dholak, something like membrane-based instrument, so they are relatively low in frequency. And if you want to listen more about these kind of musical instrument, you should increase the base of the music. So the treble circuit is basically a capacitive circuit and the base circuit is inductive circuit. Okay. So there are many applications. <laughs> there are many applications uh, which will come across. So the last is inductor. So in inductor circuit, what will happen? So it will do the same thing, L D V D T. So if you write the KVL, what will get? Sir, E minus LDI by DT is equal to zero. So DI by DT is how much? By yes, right? Yes, so di we can write as v naught by l. Okay, so we will not put any limit, we'll just write i equals to. plus constant of integration, but <clears throat> to determine the phase relationship, the constant of integration will do nothing, okay? So phase will only shift the position of graph, but not the angle. <coughs> so we Sir? ignoring C, yeah, tell me. So sh shifting the position of graph, but not the angle means? Means let's say if we have a circle and this is the arrow, so you can do the circle here. You can do the circle here. So it will shift vertically up and down. Okay, sir. Sir, and but the amplitude. Like no, nothing. It is like y goes to x square plus c. Yes, sir. So x square is this much? Yes, sir. 
the only thing is the beginning will change. It will shut from here. That's it. Yes, sir. Nothing will change. Only the the beginning will change. Something like that. <coughs> okay. Sure. Sir. Amplitude will remain same. Yes, sir. So we can add i equals to minus v not y xl and to get minus outside we can add a sign because uh, omega t minus 90 means we can take minus common it become 90 minus omega t <laughs> and 90 minus omega t become cross so it will become minus okay Yes, so sir. mathematically you can understand. So <clears throat> Excel here, if you compare, it will become omega L. And you can clearly see that uh, the opposition because inductor represents inertia. So it will anyway oppose the change. And high frequency means like faster change, right? Yes. <clears throat> so as the frequency will grow, the opposition must grow, right? That's logical. Yes. So in inductive circuit, <coughs> the opposition will grow with omega. Okay, and that is why it is called low pass filter. So a DC circuit will have zero frequency, therefore it will have uh, no opposition. AC will have frequency, so it will have opposition. And more the frequency, more the opposition, okay? Okay. So these are the three basic elements and uh, our actual topic that we need to learn is called series LCR, parallel LCR, and mixed circuits. We will see all those things in uh, next lecture. Okay. So, okay. probably one more lecture, it will be finished. So, I'll start LCR. Okay. Okay, bye. Good night. Take care. Bye, sir. Good night, sir. Sir. Yeah. Tell me. Sir, um, the waves that are uh, sir like in the modulation, like you said, superposition of waves. Which mm -hmm. two waves? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the carrier wave and the message wave. The the voice signal. Sir, the voice signal is the one that has the low frequency. Yeah, yeah. What we speak is low frequency. And the high frequency, sir? The light. Oh, the electromagnetic waves such that when correct, it correct. fixes, there correct, won't be correct. any opposition. When yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> the electromagnetic wave will pass through the capacitor because it will find that as a short circuit. <clears throat> and it will throw away the low frequency yes sir. see it is actually much more complex than what i'm saying but uh, up to this level if you have this idea that's more than sufficient so it is called the peak detector we have something called peak detector so we pick the peak value <clears throat> okay, okay, let, me, let me show you something like this if you have see we don't have wave like this we have something like this Basically, our message is not here. Message is the envelope value. Um, if I if I pick up this value, and if I join it, I'll get my message back. So this is called peak detector. <clears throat> so we read the peak value, and that will uh, help us in recreating the massive signal so it's a lot more complex process not so easy and when you will pursue let's say electronics or computer science hopefully you will come across in computer science only 
in uh, electronics and communication is a branch or uh, in IIT in NIT. <clears throat> so there you will learn about communication is there. Okay. Okay. All. So good night. Take care. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye.